let's talk about three types of central tendencies, mean, median, and mode. Now when I say central tendencies, I mean we're literally looking at the center of the data. These are three different ways to look at that, depending on our situation. Let's first start by talking about mean. When I say mean, I want you to think this is the average. The mean is the balance point of your data set. Something else you should know about the mean is that it is the most sensitive of all of our central tendencies. This is because it's really affected by outliers. To find the mean for a data set, we're going to add up all of our data values and then divide that by the number of data points that we have available. So if I have 10 scores, I'm going to add all of those scores together and then divide by 10 since that's my number of data points or my number of test scores. So for example, if I have just three data points, one, two, and three, I'm going to go ahead and add those all up together. One plus two is three, plus three is six. Then I'm going to divide that by one, two, three data points. So my average for one, two, and three would be two. Next, let's talk about the median. When I say median, I want you to think the middle. The median is literally the middle data point when we order our data from least to greatest or greatest to least. We can also think of this as half of our data is below the median and half of our data is above the median. One huge advantage for the median is that it is not affected by outliers. When we think of the housing market, this is a great measure of central tendency because we know that there's going to be some homes that are on a mountain and crazy expensive and some homes that are in a not so great part of town that are really small that are going to be really inexpensive. When we took the average of that, that really expensive home would cause our average to look much more inflated than if we were to use the median. The median is also really great for test scores in the classroom, especially when you might have the whole class that scored really poorly, but then you have two or three students that score really high. This is another great place that we use the median. Again, to find the median, here's going to be our steps. To find the median, we're literally going to line up our data from least to greatest. Then we're going to find the middle data point. I like to take my two fingers and literally go, OK, what's in the middle? If we have two middle, sometimes that happens, two data points in the middle, then what we're going to do is find the average of the two, and that's going to be our median. The last central tendency that I'm going to talk about is the mode. And when I say mode, I want you to think most. This is the most frequently occurring data point in the set. One huge advantage to using the mode is that it can be used with either categorical or numerical data. An example of this might be if we owned a shoe store and we were trying to figure out what size should we have the most of, we definitely would want to be using the mode. I hope you found this video helpful and you now have a better idea about mean, median, and mode and some advantages and disadvantages to why you would choose one over the other.